doing those little things, and I think it's important for all of us just to help us feel human right now and to take care of ourselves right now is really important. Um, and it it's also political, right? Because, um, because honoring our humanity, whether it's just putting on a pair of jeans. Yesterday, I had to paint my nails just to like kind of feel like a person. Um, but that core humanity and saying, you know what, I am worthy of feeling valued and centered and enriched and that um, life is not just about survival, but it's about um, having an enriched life is also the core reason why we fight for the things that we fight for. It's why we're demanding a living wage and not a starvation wage. It's why we are demanding rent cancellation for people who are not working right now. It's why we are fighting for all of these things. Because, you know, let me tell you, as soon as these shutdown orders started kind of rolling into place, I had this huge fear response myself just perk up because I was just bartending like 18 months ago, like a year and a half, two years ago. And, um, and the first thing and the only thing that's been on my mind this whole time is what would I have done then? And also what are my friends doing now? Because um, pretty much all my friends are, you know, a lot of my friends are just still from that space. And, um, and it just makes absolutely no sense when a pandemic, which is the fault of no one, sweeps through our community, forces us uh, out of work, that we're supposed to somehow take personal responsibility for a global pandemic. It makes no sense. We now have almost 20 million people that have filed for unemployment pretty much overnight, just in the span of a few weeks. And it is completely unprecedented. We have never seen anything like this in recorded American history, it, at least in, in recorded uh, modern American history. And what does that mean? I think what it's done is that it has kind of exposed a lot of the things that have already been ridiculous in our system, the things that we have already known to be ridiculous in our system. It has always been wrong for those of us who work for tips, most of us either don't have insurance or the insurance we have is, is far too insufficient to actually help us get the care that we need. And so, so, you know, I think right now we've basically had this huge shock where tens of millions of people are now unemployed and we're starting to ask ourselves, why does our ability to go to a doctor and why did that ever rely on our employment status to begin with? Why does our ability to get medicine, get insulin treatment, get a coronavirus test, why did that ever be predicated on the fact of who our employer was or whether we were employed or not? It's unjust. It's always been wrong. And even as we've been negotiating uh, unemployment benefits and, and maximizing those, there was this funny moment where at the like last minute before this emergency bill, Lindsey Graham and a couple of other senators tried to block it at the last minute because they said, wait, 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 if we're gonna add $600 on top of existing unemployment insurance, what if someone makes more money off of unemployment than if they, got, if they were still working before they got laid off their job? And instead of that being an argument to reduce unemployment, why is that not an argument to pay people a damn living wage and to make sure that people are able to live off their wages to begin with? We don't solve those problems by making sure that that starvation continues in a pandemic. And that's exactly the kind of logic that we have to turn around. We need to make sure that, that our workers and the service economy in particular, this is the one of the largest and most fastest growing sectors of our economy. And the fact that millions of people now don't know if they'll be able to go to a doctor, don't know if they'll be able to pay rent. This is the richest and most modern country in the world. Like, how is this even a reality right now? It shouldn't be. Um, it's wrong. 
We've got a bunch of people up in the White House. Steve Mnuchin thinks $1,200 lasts people 10 weeks. Well, why don't you come on down here and try to make that work? Um, because there are people that just have never even been within 10 feet of any sort of economic instability in their lives. And those are the exact opposite people than the ones that should be dictating our public policy right now. You all are the ones that should be dictating our public policy. One fair wage should be dictating our public policy. Pe everyday people should be dictating our public policy because the people closest to the pain should be closest to the power, should be closest to the policy. And so, um, you know, I'm just thankful to be with you all as organizers who are leading that fight, who are on the front lines, who understand that experience and know exactly what the demands need to be to make people's lives better. And so I'm just happy to amplify and support. And I just thank you all so much for doing that work.